Hello and welcome to my video tutorial series here over CompTIA Project Plus. These videos are just going to be some test prep questions and answers to help you understand some of the concepts that are related to the CompTIA Project Plus certification exam. And I will go over questions and answers and why an answer is why what it's supposed to be. For those of you that have taking lots of certification exams, you know that as you're preparing, those things that we get right, we don't really pay much attention to. We just move on. But those questions that we get wrong, that's what drives us to go and do some more research so that we have a firm grasp of that material. So in this video, what I'm going to cover are the project basics. So make sure that while you're studying, you're very well versed in all the project basic concepts, terms, documentation, where it applies. So always take a look at the certification objectives. Look at those domains, the objectives tied to those domains. And what I always recommend everyone do is to take the domains with the objectives and put those into a document and make your notes there. This will be a great exam cram tool for you when you go to prepare for your exam those last couple days or even the last couple hours. So let's delve right in into looking at a couple of questions. Here our first question is, in which phase is the project kickoff meeting typically held? As you look through these answers, hopefully one jumps out at you right away. And hopefully the one that jumped out at you is the execution phase, C. Because the project kickoff meeting is held after that project charter is signed and approved, then the project meeting normally, or the kickoff meeting, is normally going to introduce those members of the project team. And the project team creation doesn't happen until that execution phase of the project phases. And you remember there are five of those initiation, planning, execution, monitor control, and closing in that order. Now in the real world, a kickoff meeting can happen in any of those first three phases, but for CompTIA's certification exam, make sure that you know that it occurs in the execution phase. All right, we've gotten started with that question. Let's take a look at another. Now you see here that at the end of this sentence it says choose two. Make sure when you're taking your certification exams that you pay close attention to this. Take your time reading the questions because you'll want to make sure that you select the exact amount that are necessary. So for this question, what are the defining characteristics of a project? Now this is one of the first things you learn when you're studying project management. Very easily, there are two choices here as we know from the question but they are B and E. When you summarize what a project can be, it's very simply. It's temporary in nature and it creates a unique product or surface, service. And it has a definitive start and a definite finish. It also contains a reason or a purpose and it may be part of a program or it may be part of a larger portfolio. A group of related tasks is not necessarily a project, but could be a to-do list of some other kind. Operational activities are activities that take place after a project has already reached the conclusion, after it's been completed all the way through the process. And as we look at reworking, this is an existing project when we're reworking a project. Um, it's not creating anything new in means of a product or a service and it doesn't meet the properties that define what a project is. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the next question here. And in this one, the project team is responsible for all the following listed below except for which one? Now hopefully you selected A. Providing governance on the project is the responsibility of the project management office, not the project management team. So remember, that's the PMO, the project management office. They are going to provide the governance that's needed for the project. The project team is responsible for contributing their expertise to the project, 
contributing deliverables according to that project schedule. They're going to estimate the task durations that need to be completed during the project, as well as estimating costs and dependencies. That is what is going to be the responsibility of the project team and what's the responsibility of the PMO or project management office. So let's go ahead and look at the next question here. This one is, what is a work breakdown structure? Trust me, you definitely need to know what a work, down, work breakdown structure is. Now that you've read through those, hopefully you chose the second option here. The work breakdown structure is a deliverable oriented decomposition of a project. It is one of the most fundamental building blocks of project planning such as you know the scheduling of activities and it's used as an input into numerous other planning processes that you've hopefully got a firm grasp on all right next question what elements are explained in a business case now read through these carefully as you've read through these hopefully you didn't get tricked up, but you did choose choice D for all of the above. Because the business case is obviously a written document report that helps executive management and key stakeholders of the project determine the benefits and rewards of that specific project. And this business case can include such things as justification, alternative solutions, as well as an alignment to the overall strategic plan of the organization. A good job. Let's take a look at another question here. Of the following, which are considered key activities of the monitor and control phase? There are three options here that you should select. Okay, hopefully you've made your choices. And they are A, C, and D. Performance measuring and reporting, performance quality assurance, and monitoring of the budget are all the activities that are associated with the monitor and control phase. Now this phase also includes uh, governance activities, monitoring the risk issue logs that you created, and administering the change control process. So all of those have to do with the monitor and control phase. Here's our next question. This one, which of these plans that are listed below determines the information needs of your stakeholders? The format of information delivery, the delivery frequency, and the preparer. Which of these plans listed here? Hopefully some things jumped out at this because it's obviously there's only one option here that makes sense, and that's the communication plan. This is where all the elements of the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why of your communication needs are all documented. All right, this one, uh, hopefully you are well versed in the critical path. So make sure that you pay attention to that. You will see some questions about critical paths. With this specific question, a project has task A, which will take two days. Task B will take three days. Task C, which will take two days. Task D, which will take two days. And task E, which will take three days. Task A is a predecessor for task B and for task C. Task C is a predecessor for task D. Both task B and D are predecessors for task E. Based on the four options here, what is the task sequence for critical path? And I highly recommend you take your little dry erase sheet that you're given at the exam center to write this out. Okay, the choice here is that fourth choice, A to C to D to E. The critical path has task A, which takes two days, then task C, which takes two days, task D takes two days, and then task E, three days. You total those up, and you come up with a total of nine days. This question here, which conflict resolution technique produces a win-lose result for the parties. Definitely know all four of these conflict resolution techniques. 
your choice here should obviously be choice A, forcing, because this is where one party gets their way and the other party's interest is not even represented. They're forcing that on them. Next question, when the project team is dependent on an entity outside of their organization, like a product vendor delivering equipment, this is known as what type of dependency? All right, the choice you should have made is choice C, external. An external dependency is where an entity or condition outside of the project drives the overall scheduling for a specific task. Next question here, what is the indication of how fast a project is spending its budget? Ah, we definitely need to know this, and this should be pretty easy as you think about the question. I'm sure all of you checked D, burn rate, because the burn rate is how fast the project is spending its allotted amount of budget, or how fast the rate money is being expended over a given period of time. That is what burn rate is. And some of you have probably thought, oh, how fast we're burning through money, that phrase. So that will help you remember that. Next question here. In what project phase of the five phases is the influence of stakeholders the least effective? Hopefully you were able to see which phase was left out here but also able to eliminate some so that you chose choice D because while our stakeholders start out with a lot of influence on the project, it decreases as their project advances because the execution of the project solidifies our deliverables at the expense of stakeholders being able to change their minds. That is why we chose D, monitor and control. All right. This question here, in what organizational structure does a project manager have the most limited authority? Take a second here and look through these choices and hopefully you chose functional because in a functional organization, the authority is going to reside with the functional manager, not the project manager. Make sure you can distinguish the characteristics of each of these organizational structures. All right, which type of cost estimating uses a mathematical model to compute the costs? Choice C, parametric estimating often uses a quantity of work multiplied by the rate formula for computing the costs. Next question, I know you love seeing those numbers, but as project managers, we work with numbers. Now, a project you are managing has an earned value of $2,500 and an actual cost of $2,275. The cost variance for our project would be which of the following listed here. Now, as you recall, cost variance is computed by earned value minus the actual cost. So we have our earned value of $2,500 we subtract our actual cost of $2,275, which gives us $225 choice B. Make sure you remember that formula. All right, now we're gonna talk a little bit about Agile. During our organization's Agile daily stand-up meeting, what are the three questions that are asked as well as answered in those daily stand-up meetings when we're using Agile? After looking at all of these options, you should have selected the last one, choice D. You are asked and answered, what did I accomplish yesterday? What will I do today? And what obstacles are preventing progress? These are the three questions asked during the stand-up meetings or scrum meetings. All right, last question here. In which of the below five project phases, you should definitely know these project phases by now, which of these are the majority of the processes and product, 
project documents created? In which of these phases are these the majority of processes and project documents created? This should be relatively easy because this is when we're doing all of our planning. This is the planning phase. This is where the majority of those project documents are going to be created. It's also where the project goals, the project objectives, and deliverables are going to be refined and broken down into manageable units of work such as within our work breakdown structure. So knowing the documents, knowing what phases they are included in, this will help you in your Project PLUS certification exam and preparation. I hope you found this video helpful and that you continue to watch along as I prepare to do future videos. Thank you and good luck in your studies.